All right, my name's Rush, and I like aeroplanes and boats. Uh, I know the last video I was saying I've pretty much uh, given up on aeroplanes, but um, uh, aeroplane, uh, aeroplane. Uh, this this aircraft here I've been looking after for the owner for I guess like five years now, um, and I've been doing annuals on it for a while. So uh, he's asked me to do an annual, and I've got a couple of customers like this um, that I'm still looking after their aircraft, and uh, this is one of them. It's a pretty handsome looking aeroplane. Um, so before I tear into it, I was going to do a bit of an intro video on the aeroplane so you can see it because there's not many of these things out in the wild um, and what it is. So what is it? Let's start where, what is it? It's a French aircraft. It's called a MCR UL pickup or the full term is like MCR 4S, I don't know. It, it's a Dianero MCR pickup. Uh, this is the ultralight version in Australia where um, in this sort of rear area there, there's no seats. It's actually a full storage area. Um, there's actually a four seat version of this exact same aeroplane and it has an end tow of 830 kilos. This aircraft here is um, limited purely by um, legalities. Uh, to 600 kilos. Uh, it's got an empty weight um, somewhere around just under 200, uh, sorry, 300 kilos, around 280 kilos. So it has about a 300 kilo upload. Um, so it's 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 a pretty um, compelling aircraft um, by the numbers. Uh, and more about it, I'll tell you more about it. It's a um, carbon composite uh, experimental kit build aircraft or you can buy it direct from the factory. Um, fancy winglet, so you feel like you're flying an airliner, uh, and it's a French design, and you can see it's very, very slick. Up front, it's got a Rotax 914, so it's got a turbocharged maximum takeoff horsepower, 115 horsepower, and a max continuous of 100. Um, gives it a cruise of about 135 knots true, so it's not, it's not a slow poke. Uh, burning around 22 litres per hour. Um, so it, it's not, it's not a bad machine by the numbers. Um, very, very clean. You can see it's got almost full length flap. Um, it's got a very, very thin corded wing. Um, it is designed to go fast. Um, I'll go ahead and give you a shot of the wing here. Um, so you can see it's quite a thin wing. Um, it does have a, well, it's got a fairly thick cord, but it's a very high speed airfoil. Um, it's uh, not quite laminar flow because you can see the, th the thickest part of the cord is quite, um, quite forward on the wing. Um, but it definitely is a high speed airfoil. Um, and uh, you can see that from the tail as well. Uh, it's basically got um, almost, almost a symmetrical airfoil, but um, like a standard T-tail, it's got an inverted airfoil, so you've got um, obviously some um, downward, uh, downward force on the tail. Uh, what else can I tell you about? It's registered in RAOs, so it's only capable of taking two people. Um, Non-retractable, um, fixed gear, and you can see the gear is really nicely um, fared. Oh, uh, the other um, trick this thing has, it's a, a variable pitch propeller, not a constant speed. This one is electronically controlled. Um, it does have a constant speed function, um, but because it's electronic, you really are, the pilot is doing the constant speed brain work. Um, it's just one of those buttons you can flick with a little switch and directly change the prop. Uh, it's kind of cool because uh, when I do run the, um, I start doing the maintenance, I'll go ahead and show you how the prop moves. It's a very simple system, um, but uh, it works quite well. Uh, what else? Uh, I'm going to quickly show you some of the foibles of the aeroplane because you're probably thinking, wow, it's, I mean, this plane sounds great. Why aren't there a million of these out flying? It's really light. Um, it's got a whole heap of space in the cabin. Um, and so what's, what are the problems with this thing? Um, you, can see, you can kind of see... Let's go ahead and lift the roof up so you can have a look in. And there you go. Uh, kind of a small cockpit. Um, it's got F-16 um, fighter type seats, so you are laying backwards quite a ways. And uh, um, it's got a pretty, this, this aircraft is a kit build, so uh, you can't pick on the instrument panel because it was done by the builder. 
uh, which is fair enough. Uh, you can see all of this space back here, there's just huge amounts. This area here is meant to have two more seats uh, and then a storage area back there. So um, it has a huge, huge amount of storage available. Uh, and yeah, she's quite light, so you can fit a lot of shit in here and go fast. Um, so what, what are some of the problems um, with the aeroplane? Well, uh, I'm going to have to show you one of them when we um, tear into it. Um, it has quite possibly the worst designed flap system I've ever seen in any aircraft ever. Uh, it is really that bad. Um, it is for all intents and purposes. Um, the two flaps on either side of this aircraft are connected by a rubber band. Uh, and I'm not exaggerating. Um, the rubber band has teeth. It's one of those really thin little rubber things that time the um, flaps together. Uh, and then it has um, uh, two motors which move a shuttle along a screw jack, uh, which is what pushes the flaps up or down. And um, they made the, uh, not the screw jack, but the little shuttle that moves up and down. You imagine there's a screw that's turning. Uh, and as it turns, it moves a shuttle back and forward, and then it moves back, it pushes the flap down. Uh, well, the original design of the aircraft made that shuttle um, out of lead, and so the uh, the rods with the thread on it was made out of brass, which is you know quite a hard metal. Um, and so uh, several of these aircraft have been lost because lead is a very soft metal, brass is a very hard metal, and it chewed out the threads, and basically the shuttle was able to slide all the way to one end. The other shuttle didn't fail, and the aircraft got asymmetric flaps, rolled over on approach, and killed everyone. Um, that's happened a few times. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, um, the flap inspection on this aircraft is uh, very, um, very important. And uh, what are the other foibles of the aircraft? Oh, yeah, I'm going to show you the T-tail, um, because you can see it. Um, the, the, the T-tail is, it doesn't fill me with confidence. Um, so uh, I, I'm sure the math lines up uh, on the um, structural loading of all of the points that hold this um, tail on, um, but <laughs> we'll go ahead and show it to you. Uh, and that is how the T-tail is held on. Um, so you can see the full flight control is there. And the, uh, the flight control is held on by these um, uh, aluminum, aluminium um, brackets that are bolted into the carbon fibre. Just go ahead and think about that for a little while. Uh, and then there is a single bolt that goes through, again, a carbon fibre um, vertical stabiliser. Um, there is some uh, doubler there that goes over it. Uh, one bolt that goes through and a nut on the other side, which you can't quite see, which is obviously very good for inspections before you go flying. Uh, and it has a... Uh, I can't even see from here. I'm gonna have to have a look because there's some covers on it. Um, I can't tell if it's metal lock, nylock, lock, or just a miscellaneous nut on the other end, uh, which is holding this thing on. And uh, so that's that's the uh, you're saying well, that's the attachment point. No, uh, why this is um, uh, why it f doesn't fill me with confidence. I'm being generous here. Is uh, this is actually the hinge point of the flight control? So if we go ahead and move the flight control, uh, you can see that it hinges around that point. Um, so while there's not a huge amount of load because it is sort of right in the aerodynamic center of the flight control, um, there's a lot of moving parts. And what you typically don't like to do is have a moving part and a structural loading point at one spot. Oh dear. Uh, but with a normal moving tailplane, that's what you have to do. But you would expect maybe something a little bigger. Now that's just the head of the bolt, right? And this is a... Um, uh, what do you call them a screw cap head bolt so the actual um <laughs> the actual uh, diameter of the bolt is uh you know even smaller what's well, about the size of the um, allen key hole there um yeah uh, as you might have already guessed there is an airworthiness directive <laughs> to inspect these con um, connections um because uh, uh that bit falls off um, uh, yeah, you also will lose the whole aircraft and everyone on board. Fantastic design. 
Um, I'll show it to you on the other side as well. Yeah, and you, you're probably thinking, oh, maybe this part is um, another attachment point. Um, no, you'd be incorrect. Uh, that rod there is what attaches to the trim tab up the top here. Um, so, yep, that is non-structural. It just moves, and you can see that the trim tab is a balance tab moving in. What's well, an anti-balance tab? Because it's moving in the opposite or the same direction as the flight control, um, but then it can also be trimmed up in the cockpit by uh, an electronic um, um, trim motor, which is somewhere down in here. Um, again, that rod is like, it's ridiculous. The rod goes like all the way down here somewhere and there's a trim motor there. It's again, like if you're sensing I'm being a little facetious, um, about why that's not a good idea, then, um, yeah, you're already halfway there. Um, don't worry about the paint that's cracking on top. Uh, gel coat was way too thick. Um... Yeah, and then where is the flight control attachment? Well, this is the flight control attachment. Um, and uh, yeah, so when the pilot moves the stick forward and aft, um, this is the push rod, uh, and that push rod goes all the way down through the um, vertical stabilizer. There's like a bell cranky thing down here. So when the rod moves that way, it moves the thingy and it pushes the thingy, it does all that. Um, so yeah, uh, then you're thinking, well, when you're in an out of trim state, what happens? Well, uh, you can imagine then all of the um, flight control loads go down this push rod, come down to this bell cranky thing here and then like just, um, uh, you know, uh, 10 internet points if you guess there's an airworthiness directive on that as well. Um, and uh, yes, there is only one nut holding that in, and that one is a nylock nut, um, which is also wonderful, um, but uh, uh, even better, um, those little baby Allen key screw cap heads there. Ooh, wasp nest? Yeah. Um, those little screw cap heads uh, are going up into some um, carbon composite. And, uh, ooh, what do we have here? People playing along at home. I see a little bit of something, something going on there. That's pretty cool. Hey, a bit of this, a bit of that. And if you're wondering what the fuck I'm talking about, there is a whole bunch of galvanic corrosion going on up there. Fuck, I haven't used any of these words forever. Uh, yeah, so we got an aluminum bracket with steel bolts, stainless steel lock wire, and probably CAD plated um, uh, washers in under there. Uh, and we're probably even seeing some kind of corrosion that's coming down. Those bolts are going into something. Oh, where's my finger? Those bolts are going into something. Uh, those bolts might actually even be stainless. They could be stainless, those screw cap heads, and they might be going into a steel fitting, which could be corroding. And uh, if that corrodes and then the fitting releases, then it doesn't matter how good all of this shit's held together. That's just gonna pull out from um, the composite above. Um, so uh, yeah, a little bit, a uh, little bit already. Just with my five-minute look around this thing, I can already tell you I'll be taking this whole flight control off um, for this inspection. Um, I'll be taking it off because I'll need to get in and have a good look at these fittings in here and um, see if. But, but this is all that holds the flight control on. These things let go. I'm killing the guy on board. So um, yeah, the, that flight control will be uh, being removed at some point um, during during this inspection. Um, yeah, so I don't like that I can visibly see some galvanic corrosion that's going on there um, because I can't tell what's going on up inside. Whatever these things are screwing into, um, it could be fucked as it corrodes, it expands, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, so like here's like an Achilles heel that just kills everyone if anything goes wrong. Uh, and there's not a lot of redundancy or built-in strength into the system. Like I said, I'm sure by the numbers, um, you know, you do the math in your doobly-doo um, Fusion 360 calculator, um, it'll tell you, sure, those bolts are strong enough, um, but uh, those, um, those programs don't account any dynamic loading. They just can't count for it. So dynamic loading would have a lot more spikes in loads. Uh, and um, pilots... 
really inventive bunch um, find new ways to crash themselves every day. So, uh, yeah, I'm... Yeah. So, yeah, you probably started looking at this plane going, wow, that's a, that's a nice-looking aeroplane. Man, where, why aren't these around everywhere? And, you know, between the tail falling off and the flaps giving you asymmetric flight controls or you roll over and die, um, there's, there's not a lot um, that makes you go, yeah, I should go hunting for one of these right away. Now, admittedly, I haven't seen any of these, um, these aircraft out of the factory uh, this one's quite old. I think it was built in the 90s or something like that. So she's 20, 30 years old. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm sure the plans have changed and maybe the design back there has changed. So I'm not shitting on the whole the whole aeroplane. Um, just potentially when this thing was made, um, she might have been missing a few bits and pieces, um, potentially. I'll just show you the other side of the wing. Um, it's got a very, very um, simple flap um, system. Uh, there's not a lot that holds the flap laterally, um, especially when you deploy the flaps. Uh, I'm going to have to have a look at those wheels as well. I can already visibly see a little bit of corrosion up there. And the owner said that there's a squeaking sound coming from the brakes. And um, what also is near the brakes is the whole undercarriage system. So I'm having a look down there. Uh, what else? Uh, oh, yeah, external stiffeners under the aeroplane. They're a good time. Um, so the uh, uh, the fuselage, um, even though it is a um, monocoque design, it uh, um, did require some floor stiffeners, uh, especially around where the wing carry through is. So um, under the aeroplane here. Yeah. Uh, you can see the spars um, fit, they kind of like slot into the airframe. And uh, yeah, well, you know, instead of building the fuselage or building the wings around the fuselage, well, you just cut a big fucking hole in the fuselage and then you just jam a great big, uh, big stiffener there in the way and uh, Bob's your auntie. Um, that will connect the front of the aeroplane to the tail of the aeroplane. Um, just those guys there. Uh, that's actually not uncommon for most uh, experimental aircraft, but typically you'd see some kind of a panel or something like that over it, so um, you don't look at it and go, yeah, they're my wing spars. That's pretty cool. Um, uh, what else? Yeah, nose gear, you can see all that shit. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you're like, well, fuck. Why would you want to work on this thing? It's just a liability. Yeah, it is. Uh, for those of you guys that uh, have been watching me for a long time and have watched the stuff I've done, um, uh, you might remember a story about another Dynero MCR, a little two-seater, uh, and that was an aircraft that um, I was doing a pre-purchase inspection on here at this airfield. Uh, and uh, that was the aircraft I recommend the owner do not even start the thing, it's going to catch fire. Uh, and I was doing it for someone who was going to purchase an aircraft. Uh, and so I obviously told that owner, don't buy the aeroplane unless they're giving it away for free. Owner didn't listen to me, uh, got someone else to do the maintenance on the aircraft, said it was all good to go. It immediately took off and um, uh, immediately killed the pilot. Uh, so the, the aircraft left, it had a partial engine failure that led to a total engine failure. The pilot tried turning around, coming back home. Uh, that aircraft has a, had a very similar wing to this. Um, it's a very, very uh, highly loaded wing. Uh, there's not a lot of surface area on this wing, right? Like if I stand here and just kind of like move my arm around, it gives you a sense there's not a lot of surface area on this wing. And uh, yeah, so anyway, the guy was taking off, uh, had a partial engine failure, tried to turn around, um, never unloaded as he turns and the thing just spun in, killed him. Um, and it did all of that uh, because I, you know, identified that the engine was a piece of fucking junk and it should have been put in the bin and used as a boat anchor uh, and no one listened to me, uh, including several people on the airfield, including apparently the most experienced engineer on the airfield and um, he signed the aircraft off and immediately killed someone. Um, so why, you say, well, what does that have to do with this aeroplane? 
Uh, well, this is the same design airplane, and um, uh, surprisingly enough, I, I really, I really like this owner. He's done, he's done good for me. He's been reasonable, um, and uh, 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 I don't want him to die in an airplane. Um, and so, you know, I can't be. I'm not going to be right about everything. Uh, in fact, I might miss something on this airplane, but. Uh, 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 if I was a betting person, I would bet on myself finding problems with this particular airplane over literally anyone else on this airfield. Because, you know, they just seem to have a habit of killing people. So, um, yeah, that's why. Uh, I like the owner, I like this airplane, and because I've been working on it for quite a while, um, it's, uh, uh, I've got um, a little bit of, what's the word? professional responsibility in making sure this aircraft keeps going. Will this be the last annual I do on it? Maybe. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens in the future. Um, I doubt it, though. Um, I think I'll be around for a little bit longer. Um, I don't know why I'm walking this way when there's a fucking door there, but anyway. Um, but look, it's a cool aeroplane. It's a little bit different. I thought I would give you guys a little bit of something. Uh, and over the next few days, I'll be um, tearing it apart and having a look at it. So um, I, I, I don't think I have the facilities to stream. I mean, I've got my iPad and my phone, but um, I don't have Starlink or anything here. I do have um, internet, but it's pretty shit internet. So I don't think I'll be able to stream, but I might be able to make a few more of these videos for you and show you the airplane, especially once I get its, uh, get its clothes off and show you the engine. Uh, it's quite an interesting little engine. Um, it's the turbocharged, so basically a turbocharged um, 912 80 horsepower. Um, yeah, so a lot of people think these are 912 that are turbocharged. Um, well, they are, but they're the 80 horsepower version of a 912, um, not the 100 horsepower. That's what the 915 derivative is from. Um, yeah, so you've seen the plane where it looks all pretty, um, and we'll see what demons we can find lurking on the inside. Uh, hopefully not a lot, um, because yeah, planes are expensive. Um, but yeah, I just, this, uh, from the very first moment I saw this aeroplane, um, the only, oh, fuck, who cares about the engine? Who cares about uh, the wings in this thing, strong as fuck? Um, the first thing I did when I first looked at this like five years ago is I spent probably half a day looking at that tail going, man, I really do not like this. Um, and then uh, looked at the flap system. I was like, man, <laughs> I really do not like this. Um, so those are the two points that I try and spend a lot of time looking over um, because the, the, the failure modes of any of one of those things going wrong is an immediate loss of the aircraft. Um, you lose an engine, uh, like you think about the risk profile, you lose an engine. That doesn't necessarily mean an immediate loss of aircraft. Sure, you could be in a bad position. There could be trees in front of you, box of puppies, all of those other things where you have to do something evasive. Um, but it's not as high a probability that if something goes wrong up there, you immediately lose the aeroplane. Here, you have a failure mode of that flap system, which I'll, I will get a video of and show it to you. You lose the aeroplane. Um, and, uh, well, not an immediate catastrophic loss. Uh, if the pilot's good and he flies the aeroplane properly and the aeroplane properly, well, we, whatever switch that we touch while we're touching it is we don't remove our hands from it. So when in this aircraft, um, uh, when you deploy the flaps or use a little switchy button to bring the flaps down, is your finger should stay on that. If you feel any kind of roll as you're flying or any kind of uncommanded roll, you immediately return the flaps to where they were. Um, it's just the people have like flicked the switch and gone, fuck, the plane's rolling. It gets to a point where you don't have enough aileron. Um, you see the size of the aileron versus the size of the flaps. Um, and you don't have enough and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter even if you get the flaps up at this point, you're over on your back. So um, yeah, losing the flaps isn't necessarily as immediately bad as if you lost the tail. Uh, lose the tail, just um, you're a passenger uh, on a really shitty, um, really shitty dart. So yeah, the, the, the flaps aren't quite as bad. Back there, ugh, yuck. Yuck, 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 yuck. Um, so yeah, I gotta inspect it, shove a mirror in there, look around with a fucking uh, uh, little, little flashlight, pretend I know what I'm talking about with airplanes and um, hopefully not find anything bad that makes the owner scared. Yeah, enjoyed the little video. I'll leave you guys to it. Bye.